When you went back and watched the Northwestern tape, what stood out to you? Uh, just the missed opportunities in the past game. You know, that, that was the biggest thing that stood out to me from a negative standpoint. From a positive standpoint was uh, I, I thought our offensive line, tight ends, and running backs um, really played really well. Very dominant. When you look at, uh, PJ talked about on Monday about just trying to make the routine plays and talking about how though there was a couple throws that Ethan would have wanted back on those timing throws. When you work with him this week, how have you seen him respond? Uh, he's, he's responded great. He responded great in the second half of the game. Um, you know, uh, I wasn't worried about that at all. Uh, you know, it's just he missed a couple throws. You know, um, it's, it's that simple. It's going to happen again at some point in time. Uh, you know, it happens to everybody. So I, I, I really just wanted to see um, how he came out in the second half. And, you know, we were pretty conservative in the second half with everything, but I just wanted to see how he responded to that, right? You know, that's part of your growth as a quarterback. You, you want to complete every ball, but you're not going to uh, with it. So, like, how, how do you respond when you have an incompletion that's one that you know that – you're going to hit it 19 out of 20 times, right? Does that make you put you into a little bit of a shell? Or when you miss one like that, do you sit there and smile and say, wow, I'm going to hit the next 19 of them? That's how I want the quarterback to respond when he misses a throw, uh, especially one as talented as he is. Uh, you know, but I, I, that takes some time, you know, and, and growth to get to that mentality. Kurt, PJ talked about uh, Tanner, uh, excuse me, Ethan and, kind of finding a rhythm and getting in the right spots on the sideline. I know you're in the press box, but when he's going through a game, what are the things you need to see from him to make sure that he's locked in at the right times and loose when he can be at other times? I, I think that, you know, I'm still getting to know how he operates. He, he's a pretty loose kid to begin with. Um, I've never been one to uh, – you know, I've had all kinds, you know, throughout my career. I've had the guys that are wired, that are so tight, it's unbelievable. You know, they prepare like a defensive lineman. Um, you, you know, I've had guys that are, that you, you felt like they were going to take a nap in between drives. Um, you know, and I always try to let them develop their own personality, you know, within it. But they, they know they have to be able to keep their focus and concentration, which is something we work on all the time in practice, you know, with it. So I don't, I don't worry too much about that. I think that, uh, you know, where I, I think what was challenging for him on Saturday might have been that just it was cold, um, you know, and being able to stay warm, loose, he wasn't getting cold on the sideline or anything like that. You know, I mean, crap, we got heaters and all that other stuff, and it, it wasn't ridiculously cold. Um, you know, but just keeping your arm loose and warmed up, you know, trying to develop that type of rhythm, um, you know, and he's got to figure out what works for him. You know, what does he need to be ready to go out there? Um, but I, I didn't think it was anything that he wasn't ready or anything like that. I mean, the, the, he, he missed a couple throws that he he makes all the time, um, but all quarterbacks do. You know, it, you know how do you respond to that? And I thought he responded really positively, and I thought it was a great growth moment for him, great growth opportunity, and I thought he took advantage of it. As you look back on your time with Tanner ahead of senior day, what will you always remember and cherish about coaching him? Uh. You know, when I, honestly, like, I, I, it chokes me up a little bit um, when I think about him being done playing. You know, we've been together so long and had such a close relationship. You know, but, I mean, he, he was a win he's a winner is the thing that I remember about him is he's a winner. You know, he finds a way to get the job done and to end up with, you know, help us end up with one more point than our, our, our opponent. Um, he never cared about style. He knew he wasn't a fashion designer. If you're a fashion designer, you, carry about, you care about style and how you look and how you're dressed, right? He's a quarterback, and he knew his job was to win the game, period, right? And so he wasn't worried about that. He never, 
never worried about it or anything like that. He just wanted us to win, score one more point than our opponent. So a, a winner would be the way that I'll think about him. Kirk, what's most concerning about the Iowa defense? Everything. It's it might it, it it's the best defense I've seen in a few years. I, I've been watching them and trying to think about, you know, what, how do I compare them? Who do I compare them to? Who do I what do I think of as I'm watching them? And uh, you know, it's the best defense I've seen in a while. Uh, they don't have a weakness. I think Phil Parker is a tremendous football coach. If you look at the consistency that this guy's had defensively um, over the course of his career, you know you, you know that he's a great football coach. And he has a great scheme, the scheme that fits his players. He recruits incredibly well for players that fit his scheme. And they're like a machine. Every year you think, well, next year we'll get a chance to play against these guys. And then next year comes in there, uh, oh, boy, here they go again. Um, but th this defense is, you know, they're always really good. Th this defense is outstanding. There, the, you, there's no holes in it. You know, there's no weak links. There's no holes. And they're really, really well coached, which Iowa's defense always is really well coached. So um, we'll have a work cut out for us, and I'm looking forward to the challenge, though. You mentioned weather earlier. This uh, appears to be the coldest game of the Fleck era with a little wind coming in, too. How does the game change when it gets into the single digits? Single digits for Saturday? <laughs> the wind chill, that's what they're saying. Really? Uh, I try not to look at the weather till like, Thursday um, with it. Uh, I mean, the the wind, I don't, I don't know if the – Cold, it probably, you know, needs to be zero or less probably for the cold to affect it. Um, but the wind affects games. You know, it, there's no question about that. It, it definitely affects games. Um, it just does. You know, it, it can, uh, you know, it's, if it's windy enough, it really limits you to being able to, you can only throw the ball in two of the quarters. Um, and then that can hurt you too. You know, when you try to throw the ball deep with that kind of wind behind you. Um, so wind is – I worry more about wind. I think wind affects an offense more than any other element, you know, um, when it gets to a certain miles per hour with those winds. More than rain, more than snow, more than cold, um, wind is – it can affect the game. Anything else for Coach? What do you think are the reasons why I was uh, defended in a limited explosive plays at such a high level under Parker? They play a lot of zone coverage. They, uh, they, they're, their guys have their eyes on the quarterback a lot, their DBs. Um, they've had really good DBs, so they – feel comfortable that do they do a great job with their fundamentals or DBs um, they'll stay above you and yet contest the you think oh well we'll throw the ball in front of them here for a seven yard gain here we'll take the little ones here but they drive on the ball and they contest them and so their their fundamentals are really good um, you know I, I I think philosophically, you look at the way he plays his quarters coverage. He doesn't want to get. He's not going to give up the deep ball. You know, there, if if you did a study on it, you know, and looked who limits the explosive plays the most um, per season in college football, and I bet you, if you looked over the last ten years, it would be Iowa um, would be there. Uh, that's just the style of play that they play um, with it. Plus, they usually have a pretty good pass rush. That helps. Anything else for Coach? All right, thanks for joining us, Coach. See you guys. Have a great day.